particles like these so fast with me. Bombs out of mechanics and tied up circle words, but no one can deny the fact that quantum theory works. This stop point is quite similar to the last stop point. I'll read the actual stop point first in this video. It says identify the difference between P type and N type semiconductors in terms of number of negative charge carriers and positive holes. Right, so we have to talk about how many negative charge carriers and positive holes P type and semi P type P type and N type semiconductors overall have, sort of generally speaking. Which one has more positive holes, which one has more negative charge carriers? So I'll quickly recap again what P-type and N-type semiconductors were. Your P-type semiconductor was a conductor which had its normal silicon or germanium plus it had a any group 3 element added to it. So for example, boron would be one of them. And in this case, P stands for conduction via positive holes. So you can already guess that your P-type semiconductors will have more positive holes than your N-type semiconductors as they have one of their main conduction ways is for these extra positive holes. And the reason why is because if we add any group 3 element into the structure, the lattice of a semiconductor, these group 3 elements have three valence electrons. So not only not electrons, but valence electrons. So you can see this would be the R boron. It has one, two, three valence electrons. And that would be for any group 3 element. And if we add that group 3 element into the lattice, so replacing a normal silicon, as we've done here, one, two, these ones here. Now this boron will have be sharing its electrons right here. It has these three of its electrons being shared. And importantly, the one here, where there used to be an electron when it comes to the silicon being in the structure, now there's no electron. The reason why this boron doesn't have four electrons to share, it only has three. So that means wherever a boron is, the place where there used to be this this extra bond here, there's now a positive hole. Right? So we have one here and there's another boron here where it can't share its extra electron. So it's, there's going to be two positive holes. And that means that these positive holes will help carry current because electrons, the neighboring electrons, will use it to basically eventually jump and get to the other side. Right? So we have these electrons jumping, filling the hole and leaving a new hole behind them. And that's what we call conduction via positive holes. So what we're going to see usually is your positive holes moving in this direction and your valence electrons moving in the opposite direction. Your valence electrons moving in this direction. And that helps us carry current. So that is one way that we can conduct current in a P-type semiconductor. You're still going to see some conduction electrons being produced because remember this is still mostly silicon. When we add a P-type semiconductor only about 0.01% of the whole structure is actually that, that group 3 element. The rest is still silicon or germanium, your normal group 4 element. right? So with those group 4 elements, we still have the possibility of, for example, having one of these silicons, one of the electrons, gaining enough energy and jumping from there into the conduction shell, and then becoming some, removing this electron here, putting it in the conduction shell, and then becoming a negative charge carrier in the conduction shell, and then obviously it would have the creation of another positive hole. But the main idea is here, in the, in the case of P-type semiconductor, even when this happens, even when we have one of the electrons jumping from its valence shell into the conduction shell, leaving behind a positive hole. Overall, now we would have one, two, three positive holes and one conduction electron. Overall, the main way that electricity is conducted in a p-type semiconductor is via positive holes. Right? And the minor way, then the, sort of the other bit, is done for the conduction, conduction electrons, just because of the normal silicon structure of a silicon lattice where we have some of the electrons gain enough energy to become a conduction electron. But because of these group of three elements, we have lots of new positive holes. And that's how we also represent the actual band structure of a p-type semiconductor. And you can see that the difference between a p-type semiconductor and normal semiconductor is in this band structure are these positive holes here. That's because we've added a couple of positive holes when we added the group three element. Now the n-type semiconductor is basically more or less the opposite, not quite the opposite, but more or less the opposite of a p-type because n standing for the conduction by negative electrons or negative charge, negative charge. In this case, we're talking about adding 
also only a tiny amount, so the, the actual lattice itself will be mostly silicon, but we'll have a tiny amount, but 0.001% of a group 5 element added into it. So the group 5 element could be, for example, phosphorus. What we know about group 5 elements, they all have 5 valence electrons. Right, so 5 valence electrons. And what will that cause us when it comes to structure? Well, in this case, now we have we want to have silicon can make four bonds, so these phosphorus can make four bonds with its neighboring silicons here, there, 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 and there. Now they all have eight electrons, except for this extra electron, which is kind of surplus to requirements. It's just a bit too much. And what we can do with this one, this one will have have high energy. It will be able to move freely because it can't make any normal bonds. So it can move quite freely, and it will become almost like a conduction electron. So it will move almost in the conduction electron band. It will have very similar energy levels, which means here we have we have electricity being conducted by a negative electron or a negative charge carrier. So for n-type semiconductors, the band structure will look a bit like this. We're going to have a normal band structure of any semiconductor, and what we have added to it are these purple dots, which are meant to be representing our negative charge carriers. Because the extra potential is done through having extra negative charge carriers. Again, there, there are going to be some positive holes, because you're going to have some of the silicon atoms. Let's say this one here, this electron will have enough energy, it will jump to a higher state and become a conduction electron. And by doing so, it will leave behind a positive hole. So there still will be some positive holes, but overall... The reason why n-type semiconductor is a better conductor than a normal semiconductor is because it has extra negative charges compared to a normal semiconductor, right? So a normal sem semiconductor will have a couple of, of conduction electrons and a couple of positive holes, whereas the n-type semiconductor will have the same amount of negative charges and positive holes plus your extra electrons. So those extra negative charge carriers give it a higher electricity carrying potential. So in summary, basically your p-type semiconductors, their major way of conducting electricity is, so the, so the major is through positive holes and the flow of electrons because of the positive holes, and the minor is negative charge, so minor is negative charge, so we still have some negative charge, especially conduction electrons, but the positive holes constitute the major majority. Whereas for the n-type semiconductor, it's the opposite. We have the majority being your negative charge, so it's extra electrons. So the major, major, major pathway is negative charge. And the minor, so again, we still have some positive holes just because of the normal silicon lattice, but the minor one will be the positive holes. So it's just the same as the p-type, just opposite. And that's what you should know for the stop point. You should just know how they carry the current. And you should also know that both the P-type and the N-type semiconductors are better conductors than your normal pure silicon or pure germanium semiconductor. Right? So when we add either a group 3 or a group 5 element, we make it a better conductor, a better semiconductor. Right? That's what you should also know. But I hope that was useful. Thank you for watching.